How much time do you spend each week looking for updated container images for services you have running in your Kubernetes cluster? Five minutes? Five hours? Never? I used to spend hours a week checking for new container images, reading up on the changes, and not really knowing if it was going to break my cluster or not. It was super tedious doing this to the point where I almost stopped doing it. That's when I discovered Renovate Bot for Mend. Renovate is a dependency update automation tool that scans your software, discovers dependencies, and checks to see if an update exists. And if there is one, it will help you out by automatically submitting a pull request to your code base. It works out of the box and supports a wide variety of languages and technologies. It's highly configurable, putting you in control of what gets updated and when. And it's pretty smart too, and can automatically detect dependencies and suggest ideas for improvement. Here's the cool thing about it too. Not only can it scan for all sorts of dependencies, it also gives you your choice of how you want to run it. Want to run it locally as a node module or from a CLI or in a Docker container or even self-host it in your Kubernetes cluster? No problem. Want to scan dependencies from GitHub, GitLab, AWS CodeCommit or other Git providers? No problem at all. One of the great things about Renovate is that because it's open source, it puts you in control of how you want to run it, where you want to run it, and when you want to run it. So today we'll be setting up RenovateBot to give us a helping hand with Kubernetes resources. We'll create a GitHub repo to house all of our Kubernetes deployments and add RenovateBot to our repo, and then let it help us out by opening pull requests when it sees updates to any of the container images we're using. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I just hired a DevOps engineer for free. <laughs> Speaking of getting some help from automation, you should definitely check out today's sponsor, Detree. Are the services running in your Kubernetes cluster highly available? Are they configured according to EKS security best practices? Has it been hardened according to the NSA's hardening guide? These are all questions you might be asking yourself if you're running Kubernetes, but how do you know if you're following these recommendations? That's where Detree can help. Detree is a powerful Kubernetes policy management tool that can secure your Kubernetes cluster by blocking configurations that do not meet your policy. I say your policy because it's a policy that's centrally managed by your team and can be customized to suit your needs. Or you can inherit one of the many best practices guides that are pre-configured. It works by creating an admission webhook that ensures that nothing can be deployed to your cluster unless it meets your configured policy. And you can review and make changes to your policy using their dashboard. From here, you can analyze all of your policy violations, see the results of the last cluster scan, make policy changes, and even see your cluster posture score. You can even run different policies for different clusters, and you can manage one cluster for free. So secure your Kubernetes, prevent misconfigurations, and install the tree in your cluster today. Renovate works with many different source control providers like GitHub, GitLab, CodeCommit, and many others. You also have your choice of how you want to manage Renovate, meaning you can self-host it with Docker, Kubernetes, or run it as a GitHub app for free that's hosted by Renovate's parent company, Mend. We're going to go with GitHub and the GitHub app because it's super simple to set up. Oh, and a quick call out, all of this will be on my site and that's linked in the description below. First, we'll need to create a GitHub repo. This is as simple as going out to GitHub and, well, creating a new repo. After naming your repo, you'll want to choose whether or not to make it public or private. The choice is up to you and Renovate will work either way. After creating the new repo, you'll want to clone it to your machine. Now, I know that it's empty, but we'll be adding some things here shortly. After cloning it, I'm going to open it up with VS Code, but any editor will do. Now that our repo is cloned, we're going to add some Kubernetes resources to it so that Renovate can start analyzing our resources for updates. We're going to create a simple Nginx deployment and a service. For this deployment, we're going to use an older Nginx container image tag because we want to see RenovateBot actually work. So we'll go out to Docker Hub and choose an older tag. We'll then put that image tag in our deployment. Let's commit this code and push it up. Now that we have a simple Kubernetes deployment committed to our repo, we should add the RenovateBot to start analyzing our code. We can do this by going out to GitHub, finding the Renovate app, and installing it in our repo. You'll need to authorize this app for your repo or for your org. Once you've authorized this app, you can choose which repos it has access to and you're all set. If you ever decide to change your mind and remove this app from your repo, you can go to the repo settings and remove this app at any time. Once Renovate Bot is authorized and installed, it won't actually do anything until you merge a pull request that'll be open by the bot on a repo. This pull request is a special onboarding request that will show you what the bot has actually detected, along with adding the default config for the bot. 
Renovate won't make any further changes until you accept and merge this pull request. Once you've reviewed this PR, you can merge it and it will activate the bot on your repo. After merging this onboarding PR, we can go out and take a look at the logs for the bot on men's bot page. Here we can see that it's trying to auto detect all the various dependencies that the bot supports. It's checking for Ansible, Docker Compose, Flux, Gradle, Helm, and many other dependencies. But it doesn't know how to handle Kubernetes files out of the box because Kubernetes files don't really have a naming convention because there really isn't one. So we'll need to tell Renovate how to check for these Kubernetes files in our config. So we'll need to get pulled to get the latest and we should see our Renovate config file. We'll need to add a file match property for Kubernetes files. You wanna be sure that you use the right extension here, whether that be YML or YAML. Both are acceptable, but I typically use YML for YAML. So that's what I'm going to use here. Once we've made that change to our config locally, we'll then commit that change and push it up. Once we push up this change and it scans a repo, we can see a new issue was created. <laughs> this is pretty awesome. This is a special type of issue that Renovate creates for us and is kind of like a dashboard for our dependencies. If we look at this issue, it's telling us that it detected a new dependency that's related to Kubernetes and that it detected not only our Nginx tag, but also our Kubernetes API version for this deployment. <laughs> Super awesome. If you like, you can choose to disable this dashboard issue in your config, but I would recommend keeping it. It doesn't hurt, only helps. If we look at the logs from Renovate, we can also see that it detected our Nginx deployment and that it created a PR for us to review. We should see a new PR that was opened from the Renovate bot. If we look at this PR, we can see the proposed changes. It's suggesting that we change our Nginx container image from 1.24 to 1.25, which is the current latest tag. If we're happy with this change, we can merge it into our code with just a click. Awesome. So now our code base is up to date with the latest container image. But what happens if a container you're using only has one tag, say like the latest tag? Well, let's find out. Let's say for instance, we're running WordPress in our cluster and we create a deployment YAML and in our deployment YAML, we specify the latest tag versus a version tag and we commit this code and push it up. Now we can wait for Renovate to check a repository again for new dependencies, or we can manually trigger one by going back to the dependency dashboard issue and checking this checkbox to trigger it to run again. Now, if we look at the logs again, we should see that it detected WordPress. However, it's unversioned. The latest tag is non-deterministic, meaning that it's not deterministic. <laughs> or simply put, it can mean more than one thing. Renovate can't use this because it can't determine what the current version is and what the next possible version is. So instead of pinning this version to latest, we can actually pin it to the digest. So if we look at our current latest tag in Docker Hub and inspect the digest, we can see it here. It's this long string of characters. The digest is an immutable identifier for a container image and it is deterministic meaning that it can't be changed and it only references one image. We can use that for Renovate. So once we have that, we can pin our WordPress container to the digest by using it like this. It's container image at SHA colon and then the digest. Now, if we make this change and commit and push this up, we are now pinned to the digest, which is also the same as latest. Again, if we want to force a scan instead of waiting, we can go back to the dashboard issue check the checkbox, and then look at the logs again. We can now see that it detected our WordPress container image along with the digest, and it can now compare it to the current digest and open a PR if it needs to. If we take a look at the issue dependency dashboard, we can now see that it detected WordPress pinned to the digest. Now, we won't see a PR now because this digest is the latest digest. However, if WordPress releases a new container image with a new digest, we will get a pull request to replace the digest. It's a lot of digests, <laughs> making me hungry. Awesome, so that solves the latest problem. We have ways to work with Kubernetes manifests, whether they are pinned to a version tag or an unversion tag, but what about Helm charts? Well, Helm charts are just as easy. Let's say we wanted to source control our MySQL Helm deployment. All we have to do is create our Helm values file and include the version as well as the repository. Now, if you don't specify a repository, it will default to Docker Hub. But as you can see here, I'm getting this Helm chart from Bitnami. After we commit and push this up, we should see a new dependency type of Helm. And since it detected an update, we should also see a pull request to update the file. Pretty awesome, <laughs> pretty awesome. So now with the Renovate bot, we can keep track and upgrade our Kubernetes deployments and even Helm charts. And I bet you're wondering how we can deploy them. 
Well, there are quite a few ways to deploy these resources using GitOps tools like Flux or Argo CD or even just a simple plain CI task that runs Kube Control or Helm. I have a few videos on this topic, so I won't dive into it here. But what about Docker deployments? Well, if you're interested on how to automate deployments with Docker and Renovate, let me know in the comments below. Well, I learned a ton about Renovate Bot, how to add it to our Git repository, and how to automate pull requests when there are updates available. And I hope you learned something too. And remember, if you found anything in this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.